The original Sony a7C was a misunderstood camera. I don't think it was until the Sony a7C II and the a7CR came out during the midst of the compact camera hype that people really started to understand and appreciate these cameras. In my opinion, the only thing holding this camera back from really being brought up a lot of the time when people are talking about the Fuji X100V or X106 alternatives is probably the lack of any kind of film simulations or something similar to what the Lumix S9 has. Which leaves us with only one option, which is to edit the photos in Lightroom. Which I guess is the case for pretty much every other camera as well. Hmm. Anyways. And for those of you watching who wanna get this done quickly and you don't feel like watching through the entire video and following step by step, I do have a Lightroom preset available on my website that you can go over there and check out if you enjoy this video and wanna help support the channel. It is a fine tuned version of the preset that we are about to make and I use it to edit pretty much all of my photos. But for the rest of this video, we're gonna dive a little bit deeper and go over some Lightroom tips that you can then save as a preset so you can get that film look on your Sony a7C photos. So then you don't have to go out and buy a whole new camera just so you can get some fancy film looks for your photos. So for this tutorial, if you wanna follow step by step, I do have a link below where you can download the raw file and we can edit this photo together. When you think about film, usually one of the first things that comes to mind is the grain. But applying a bunch of grain to your photo will not make your image look like film. Now we will get to grain, but the first thing we're gonna go over is the tone curve. So we're gonna come down here and we're gonna make three points here and we're gonna drag down the whites. Because the thing about film is there's no such thing as pure whites and pure blacks. So we're gonna eliminate all pure whites and pure blacks from our image. So once you drag down the top right, that means you've eliminated the pure whites we're gonna do the same to the bottom left. But you don't wanna drag it up too much and then you start to get that super faded look that was popular on Instagram years ago. So I think about right there looks good. So we're gonna come over to the RGBs and we're gonna make our S curve. So we're gonna do three points here. We're gonna drag down. We're gonna do that for each one. You want your S's to be very subtle. You definitely do not wanna overdo it. And then I'm gonna come back over here to the red I'm gonna play with the green just a little bit. I wanna give the greens just a little bit more of a cooler tone because depending on the film stock that you are maybe trying to replicate, a lot of green in film looks a little bit cooler or bluer in tone. All right, now we're gonna come back up here to the basic adjustments. The goal of this is to create a preset that we can apply to pretty much any photo. So we don't wanna make too dramatic of changes to the highlights, the shadows, and the whites and the blacks. So I'm going to bring down the highlights to about, I think about 40. We're gonna increase the shadows to about 10, just to give the appearance of a little bit more dynamic range, since film has a lot more dynamic range than a digital sensor does. And then I'm going to drag down the whites just a little bit more here, and the blacks slightly as well. And just to help get rid of a little bit of the digital sharpness of the image, I'm going to drag down the texture to about, I think, 10. And we're gonna do the clarity to about nine. And the final step in the basic adjustments is to increase the vibrance to about, let's go to about 11. And as you can see, the image is slowly starting to come together, but I think the green is looking maybe just a little too saturated. So let's come down to the color mixer. And for the color mixer, I like to adjust the orange and the yellows to be just a little bit more red or orangish in tone. So we're going to bring down both to about 11. And for the green, we're gonna move that over toward the aqua teal colors just a little bit. Now, what I like to do for the saturation is a little bit different. It's just follow along and I'll show you. We're going to bring down the reds to about 
15, then we're going to slowly bring down the orange a little bit more, same with the yellow, a little bit more, come down with the green to about right there, and then starting with the aqua, we're gonna go back up. So it's almost creating a little bit of a wave for the saturation of the colors. And then lastly, we're gonna come over to the luminance and we're just going to increase the green just a little bit. Let's go to about plus 12. And let's do the same for the blue to about plus 10 and bring down the aqua to about eh, minus 10. And for the next step, we are actually going to skip the color grading because I believe that really depends on the specific image and maybe the vibe of the image you may wanna go for. So for now, we're gonna skip over that. And for the profile corrections, I typically don't use profile corrections on my images unless the distortion of the lens that I'm using is just so horribly bad, then I will. But typically profile corrections will remove a lot of the vignetting and I'm personally a big fan of vignetting. All right, so it is finally time for the green. I prefer not to go overboard with the green because then it just starts to degrade the sharpness of the image. So I like to make sure it's noticeable enough when you zoom in and just gives a little bit of texture to your photo. So I'm gonna bring the amount slider up to probably about 40 and increase the size to about 38. And we're gonna drag down the roughness to probably about 25. And so when you zoom in on your image, you will see that there's just a nice amount of texture to your photo now. And the final step is the calibration. And trust me, this is really where your image starts to come together. Calibration is just further tweaking to the saturation and the hues of your image. Now, I prefer not to adjust the tint of the shadows. So we're gonna go ahead and come down to the red primary and increase that to about 50 for the hue and we're gonna come up to probably about 24 for the saturation. And for the green primary, we're gonna shift that toward the teal to about 17, I'm thinking, and we're gonna increase the saturation to about nine. And the final step is the blue primary hue and saturation. Trust me, this is really where it just completes your image. So we're gonna bring down the hue to about 15, but we're gonna increase the saturation to about 11. And with that, we are done making the preset. So before you save the preset, you can go through and make any minor tweaks you may want to make. Like for me personally, I like to drag down my highlights just a little bit more to preserve some more detail in the sky. So I'm gonna drag my highlights down to 74, but other people may not prefer this. So when you go through and save the preset, name the preset, whatever you wanna name it, but for the settings, make sure you have the treatment and the profile checked. For basic, you want everything checked except for the white balance and exposure because when you're copy and pasting this preset onto your images, the white balance and the exposure is completely dependent on the individual photo. And make sure you have the curve, the color mixer, the effects, and the calibration. And while you're at it, make sure you have the support amount slider. So whenever you are applying a preset to something, you can make the preset maybe a little stronger or a little less strong, depending on the photo. Even I do that sometimes. All right, and now that we have saved this preset, I'm gonna go ahead and copy all of these settings. And I have a selection of photos with a variety of different lighting conditions. And I'm gonna go through and see how quickly I can edit all of them with this preset. And you can see just how close this preset is to a one click and done preset. I'm gonna increase the exposure just a little bit with that one. Warm that up just a little bit, and we are already off to the next one. And that one is done as well. And the next one. That one looks perfect. That one looks great. Increase the exposure just a little bit. 
bring up the temperature, maybe drop the highlights just a little bit more. And that looks great. Next one. Actually gonna bring up the highlights just a little bit for that one. That looks good. And copy and paste. Make that a little bit warmer. Let's go ahead and just straighten that up. And boom. And that is how quick and easy it is to edit with this preset that we both just made together and you did not have to spend any money. Now, like I mentioned, I do have a version of this preset on my website, which is a little bit more fine tuned, but I would still be more than happy just using this preset we made just now. But in the meantime, thanks for watching the video, guys. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to help support me. And I hope I could inspire you guys to get out and take more photos. Go out and shoot.